Snipe. Do we have it? We potentially have the snipe into Sparkle, into three elites. Oh, yes. I'm going to go for it. Let's see the rare card. Yep, let's do it. Bless RNG, baby. Bless RNG. Oh, wow. That's a tough first choice. Hemokinesis for the front loaded or spot weakness for the scaling. Oof. One, two, three. Now, this is kind of okay because that means we can actually heal. Otherwise, we would not heal into anything. So, not to mention, Peace Wrap is pretty good. And we got an Inflame. Please don't be an enemy. So, now we can move that pain. Okay. One problem. We don't have damage for the Sparkle. So, yes, we have really good things. I guess we have do damage. We have, we have Inflame Spot Weakness. That could be enough for the with the upgrades of Warp Tonks. Plus the Inflame Spot Weakness. That's probably enough to kill the Sparkle. I could take Field of Pain as insurance. So in the event that one of these three elites is the... The... What's it called? Triple Centuries. The Field of Pain is pretty good insurance. I also like Battle Trends and Shockwave. They're really good. Like, with the fact that I have... The fact that I have Peace Pipe and this to give me upgrades. So this gives me upgrades so I don't feel as inclined to upgrade. And Peace Pipe means I can remove pain. So I, I can buy something here. Maybe damage oriented. Athesinator, welcome to the stream, man. So I'm thinking like if World is a pretty good way to dump my damage, I suppose. Decent AoE is, AoE is pretty good for Act 1. A lot of the Act 1 things you're going to see. You can also take Shockwave. It's a pretty good utility card. Get the Weaken, which is pretty good for the Guardian. It also works with Feeling Pain if you're thinking about that. Or just take Battle Trends because it's really good draw. And we'll figure out the damage because damage is pretty easy to come by. Now, this is unfortunate that we saw this. <laughs> because... We were trying to save the Funeral Pain for insurance. And have that be a free fight that was not... Triple Century, but you know, sometimes how, that's how it happens. So, Gary is a good way to... Now we have Peace Up and Gary. What the hell? Now I have to decide between lifting, removing, and upgrading. Now, I think Hebba is better to... Kind of gets my weakness going, but also it's, it's more damage. We kind of need damage. So I'm going to do this. And I'd rather take the pain. I also want to upgrade in flame. Jeez. This fight is a little bit rough. I wonder if there's a skill pot like Limit Break or something. What else can I look for? A skill pot? Shockwave or something? I guess some Funnel Blade makes sense. That's pretty good. Can bring that back. It's probably enough to win the fight. Especially when it gets upgraded like that. Oh, the fight's over. So that was a really easy sparkle. Pendip's amazing. Fiend Fire to dump my damage, my strength, and also to do a lot of damage. Like, okay, that's insane. And we have Battle Trance. Right, so this, and it also gives me Funeral Pain. And we got Captain's Wheel. Uh, is anybody else looking at this? Hello? Fiend Fire, Battle Trance, Funeral Pain, and Flame Salt Breakers for Strength Scaling. Needed damage. Got Pendip as well. Okay. Have you tried out Hearthstone Battlegrounds? I haven't tried it out, but I've seen it. I've seen a lot of streams about it. I wonder if we just want to lift here. Start removing strikes. Let's start lifting. Man, it's an insane Act 1. Jesus Christ. So here, this is a pretty free fight. Get our powers out, gets free upgrades. I'm gonna headbutt spot weakness here. I'm gonna wake him up and headbutt spot weakness. Fight should be over. That was a waste of my captain's view, unfortunately. Do I try to do fiend fire now? Is that lethal? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 times 18. 7, yes. That was an elite fight. I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. Are you guys watching the same game? That was Act 1. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page here. Uh, yeah, this is Act 1. Holy shit, dude. Okay, so let's do the math. Oh, I should strike Fiend Fire and game over. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess I can save Fiend Fire for the boss, but eh. Trigger is pretty good. Activates our Funeral Pain as well. Removing a strike feels pretty good. 
Although we do want to have things to like... So I think lifting just makes the most sense. Although upgrade trigger is not bad either. The middle card. Okay, the middle card. We got you in the next one. I do want to upgrade trigger, but like this strength is quite nice. Quite nice. Quite nice indeed. Wow. The strength of this ironclad is insane, huh? Now I can do headbutt spot weakness. Oh my god, it's game over, boys. Just pack it in, phone it home. This ironclad is too strong. Just pack it up. 16 strength, no big deal, no damage taken. Fiend fire to get rid of the baddies. End the fight after that. Interesting. I want to go for perfect. I want to go for perfect, but I also like. <laughs> oh man, it's nuts. Perfect here, just for this, just, just for the swag. Setting up Pendip. Pendip set up perfect fight. Oh my god. I guys. Okay, and you told me to pick middle card, right? Wait, wait, and then Steve had just predicted that. Guys, am I in the fucking Twilight Zone? So did you just? Well, here you go, Maneuver. What? Is this Act 1? Now, Limit Break is a little bit awkward. Like, it's a little overkill, but at the same time, like, okay, we already have Gary, so that's pretty nice. Also, Maneuver acts for middle card, so I'm going to entertain the idea. Now, I would have suggested the Offering is pretty good. Because Offering gives good card draw, which gives bigger Fiend Fires, helps me find my powers to set up, it helps me do uh, Spot Weakness and land the Spot Weakness, so obviously... Offering was a consideration. And there's also like sometimes Final Pain exhaust. It's a, it's a nice little plus. But, uh, you know, we're respecting maneuver here. Also, okay, Snack Y versus. Okay, this is a tough choice here. Well, this could just be a YouTuber just simply for the fact that this is the most stupid act one I've ever had. <laughs> I could even try to go for like a high score here, I guess. The deck has potential. So what I was going to say is that, like, okay, Coffee Dripper is probably okay. We're not going to take a lot of damage. And Ironclad can handle this pretty well. So Nicko White gives me 7 card draw, which, in the context of this deck, 7 card draw basically means getting Limit Break uh, that much faster. Although a little bit more inconsistent, but getting bigger Fiend Fires more on average. Right, so we'll go through all of them. Basically, seven card draw means yes, I see spot weakness, limit break more often, bigger fiend fires, makes battle chance a little bit worse. It's a little bit more inconsistent. Uh, worst case scenario, if we go full aggro, Ori Kalkum saves us. Third turn, we still have Captain's Wheel, so going full aggro with fiend fires, I think, is always interesting. The problem is, if I draw too many cards, fiend fires getting rid of too many things, and maybe at that point, maybe the fight's already over. But like, sure, seven card draw is really nice. I don't know if I'm willing to go down the route of inconsistency. One thing to mention though is Warp Tongs of Sneko is really strong. So as an example, people who don't know this, if you have an Exhum that's unupgraded that costs 3, Warp Tongue hits it, it becomes 0. Another example, if you have a Barricade costs 3, Warp Tongue hits it, you know, etc, etc. That's a small little thing to think about. Testing. Testing. Okay, thank lord. Alright, cool. So, what's up, Majesty, and thanks for the best more, best more. 
Thanks for the follow, buddy. Alright, cool. So this also was an issue. Alright, we good? Cool. Alright, so elites. Two elites. We don't have block. What's the alternative? Two elites, but they're a little bit spaced apart, and there's an early shop. It's a middle shop. And campfires are pretty good because we also can lift and remove. Uh, let's go lift. Lift, remove. So that's a lot of strength. Should I just wait pen up fiend fire and it's game over? Or should I stack up pen up again? So I could do pen up fiend fire or I could just do like pen up now and then fiend fire to stack up pen up for the future. So we'll just do like pen up for the future. Because fiend fire is already lethal. I guess I can stack a pen up even more. I think stacking pendant is going to be the most important thing. Metallic has to help our block. Absolutely, Metallic has to could be a funny little thing. I'll take it. More removal? That means it makes the shop a little bit worse, but... Okay, if we're removing them, we're making Fiendfire worse. But we're making the Limit Break part of our deck better. So, like, if we remove more strikes and we have Gyria with Limit Break and we upgrade get Limit Break, then at that point we just kind of, like, scale, like, crazy fast with Headbutt Battle Trance. We'll have scaling up the Wazoo. And at that point, all we gotta do is, like, make sure our block's in order. And, yeah, FIFA will have less targets, but at that point we have so much strength it doesn't really matter. So, this is kind of just nuts. What is going on? I don't understand. I need to understand. Why are you so nice? <sighs> of course I need damage outside of moving all the strikes, so, you know, it's not a perfect science what I'm doing right now. But it's a perfect science in the sense that there's gonna be a lot of block offered. So fret not. Just keeping habit makes some sense. Pen of stacked again. I've got some block now. Twin strike dumps our strength. Ooh, it's tempting. Well, uh, flame bear is a really good block, and I would not mind. Twin strike dumps our strength, and I would like that a lot. I wonder if Twin Strike is, is better because of the strength of the game that I have. Mm. The last thing you want to do is have like no strength dumping, but Flame Bear is pretty premium block. <sighs> wow, what a cutie pie of a deck. What a cutie pie. This deck's a cutie pie, man. This deck will you bring home to mom. Bring it, show this to all your friends. You marry this deck. Hmm. Strength dumping is probably really good at about right about now. I guess there's always more opportunities to get more strength dumpers. That's my philosophy. That there's gonna be a dime a dozen of those. Now firepot versus gambler's brew. Gambler's brew is pretty good. Firepot, big front loaded smackaroo for slavers could be interesting because I think slavers is kind of a hard fight. The strength pot is also probably the worst one. I should have got discarded that. Whoopsies. At this point, I'm so many good things are happening that I'm kind of just doing inoptimal stuff. That's one of those situations. I just got pen up here though. Taking damage for the first time. Taking damage for the first time. Can you believe it? It's a miracle. Christmas miracle. Do, 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 do. All right, do we have any attacks left? <laughs> oh God! Oh, that's hilarious. Okay, so like having a source of weaken is really good. It's another attack, and having a source of weaken is really good, but it's kind of a low impact card. I could take Ghost Lammer for more block and try to sharp my block. At this point, I think what we want 
More block with limit break is always nice. Don't get me wrong. Ghost Armor is a great card. And so is having the source of weaken. I think we take Ghost Armor and we look for a way to jump our strength. And then we're just good. Okay, if there's an upgrade I want to get, it's probably limit break. Before anything else. Alright, let's find a way to jump our strength. We, we're kind of taking a, a cheat. I'm kind of cheating at the moment. I do want to kill this fight. Wait a minute. I want to keep Bash, though. Uh, I do want to keep Bash. But Fiendfire is... Well... I could just kill the Chosen. If I kill the Chosen, the fight's over. I wonder if that's just worth it. I'm getting rid of Bash. But I'm thinning out the deck and practically killing the Chosen. Or do I want to just knock this guy down off his horse? And by knocking off his horse, I mean do I want to clip his wings because he's flying. And he doesn't have a horse at all. Interesting. 44 damage versus Knocky Knocky. I mean, we do have a lot of strength coming up. The chosen could be pretty easy to kill after the fact. Hmm. Doesn't matter. I guess this guy might become a bigger threat. I guess getting... Yeah, let's do this. Less, less overall damage, though. But, oh, I can 1v1 the Chosen, no problem. That's my philosophy. I guess Flame Bear is the thing. So is Captain's Wheel. Just misleading because it pended. Damage is misleading there. Shrug it off to get our. Hey, what's up, Timothy Wolf? Get it, shrug it off to get some more block. Sure. Uh, the deck's getting short. I'm, I'm bloating the deck with block, basically, which is never a bad thing. Emily would have been fantastic. I think Heavy Blade is what we use to dump our strength. Sold. I'm buying Heavy Blade. That's my strength temper. Not my favorite, but it's it does the job. That's what I like to say. Not my favorite, but it does the job. Lizard Tail is pretty broken. <laughs> okay. Awkward. Thirty damage we're looking at. Full block. Time to go big, please. Bash heavy blade, kill the guy so we don't get the problem, and then the rest of the block is taken care of because of Glapton's wheel. Probably a really good turn. Alternative, limit break. If I limit break, then this becomes an extra twenty-one damage. Oh. Which is actually lethal. I think we always draw here first because then break makes it extra. I know I keep changing my Twitch name, but damn it, I'm staying subbed. Cheers, man. Many more to come. A Y A Y A Y A Y A Y A Y A Y A Y A Y A Y A Y A Y A Y A Y A. Thank you for the resub. Now, I don't remember who you were before, so I'm gonna call you the Goblin. I don't remember what you were before because you didn't mention it, so. But is your name Will Willis? Because I know the only person that changed his name a lot was Willis. Ah, SCD and Bakur, got you. What's up, man? Thank you for the reset, man.
I mean, I guess I guess getting out of SCD was a good it was a good choice on your part. Getting out of that name change was pretty smart. I think maybe getting out of SCD was pretty smart there. Forty two damage. Oof. Do I just do fire pot, or do I just do this? If I get rid of my heavy blade, how stupid is that? I think we just get rid of Heavy Blade here. I mean, it kills this guy, and then I can 1v1 the guys pretty easily because I have a lot of strength. Alternative is... Waste the Fire Pot, or just like take the damage in general, I guess. I could also just get rid of Heavy Blade, kill this guy, and the 1v1 should be pretty easily. We have enough strength that I don't need heavy blade necessarily. Of course, wounds are always a thing. It's like a pendip, pendip time. Okay, so there we got twin strike. Now twin strike is another way to dump our strength, and I'm a big fan of twin strike. Although, if we upgrade our existing heavy blade, we're feeling pretty good. We can also just have twin strike and heavy blade, and just be a booty smacker. Absolute booty smacker. I uh, kind of want to upgrade Heavy Blade. It's a good turn for... Whoa. Holy macaroni. Alright. So... Okay. Good block, but also... I guess this gives us upgrade. Okay, let me see. Did we just... So, let me just clarify. Heavy Blade is naturally 14 damage, right? Okay. So, this is going to be 64 damage. If I upgrade it. I could use both potions. If I want to save life, I could do... Blessing Potion, kill the, this guy, and take no damage. Like, I could just use both potions now to not take any damage here. To make this fight easier. That means I'm leaving myself with no potions against the elite, but I feel pretty confident. And then I'm also just using potions in general. Which I guess potions are here to be used. Because it's a lot of life that I'm about to fight in the elite. I'd rather stay healthy. And I know Lichita is always a thing, but like... I could just kill this thing now and take no damage for this fight. I did my math wrong. <laughs> uh, I um mm, want to talk about something that's not... It's okay. It's fair. I guess at what, 44 life? So you waste pendant. It's not a big deal, right? No other way to kill him without pendant. Means we're not gonna have pendant for this fight coming up though. Dragon Brush is interesting. Uh, interesting. Huh. Dragon Brush is interesting. With Sugar Plus, if I, if I utilize it. This is a stain relic. This is fine. Oh, safe for it. Yeah, let's just keep playing out for Fiend Fire, but that's not usually your main concern. I mean, it also has nifty little things like Headbutt, Truger with the Dark Embrace is kind of nice. Do I care about Dark Embrace setup? Like, it doesn't really provide that much to me. A second Fiend of Pain could be interesting. A second Fiend of Pain means Truger is that much better. Fiend Fire is that much better once it's already set up. I wonder if you even want to waste time setting up. I mean, this is a deck that like has Limit Break aggressive scaling. So getting things like a management block is always of the utmost importance. At this point, you just want to make sure your block's totally up to par for the heart, basically, in Act, in, uh, in act 3 bosses. Well, Fiend Fire becomes card draw, sure, but it also is... It's the little things that make Dark Embrace really nice. The ability to True Grit and Headbutt. And... Like, that's just something that's really, really good. Uh, let me see. I mean, it's a nice setup card to have. It's also kind of nice insurance for... Certain fights. 
like I guess don't deck if it won that far, but also I mean, Dark Embrace is pretty nice. A uh, second Fiend of Pain is also not bad either though. If we keep the deck small enough, because Fiend Fire is gonna be aggressively thinning out the deck. And at that point, Trugate's starting to become more relevant. And that gives me more block. We have exhaust on a lot of different areas. Mm, is the second Fiend of Pain worth drawing into that? Well, I wonder if Twin Strikes is better. Now that keeping the deck small is good. So like basically. I guess moving forward, going into Act 4. I mean, Dragon Priest is quite nice, guys. It's not super good at the moment, but it's a nice power down the line. Hmm. I wonder if Fiona Paint is better, though, because Fiona Paint just kind of makes my block a little bit better. Let's go. Although the setup is kind of lame, like I don't want to do that much setup. And what's unfortunate is that this is gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt really bad. It's probably gonna attack 100%. I made the deck kind of too. I could just full block, but I also want to just kill this thing. Mm, I, I guess blocking is pretty important considering that I have Coffee Tripper. We have enough damage next turn too. I'm only blocking because of Coffee Tripper. And then a break should be. We should take a good turn next turn. Although, that would feel like I'm paying feels like a mistake now. I guess technically I could go for the one shot by Heavy Blading and next turn we do Limit Break Heavy Blade again. Technically, that was something I considered. I also just kill both minions. Let's just go for lethal here. Set, set up pendant. Uh, we need to get some more life. We need a way to sustain. Back is amazing. Sentinel is interesting. With, so that would be a good card with you had like the Dark Embrace. But right now Sentinel is it's bad. It's bad. All this is bad. Alright. We can start token. We can lift one more time. Lifting one more time basically means... We're not as dependent on Inflame. It's my weakness to get Limit Break going. But I really want to upgrade to Heavy Blade. Because I think it's going to be very important to have this card be maximized for the Clay Lector. Yeah, I don't really need Fiendal Pain there. I think the second one is probably a little bit bad, but if the deck goes in the right direction, moving forward into um, Act 3, I think the Double Fiendal Pain is going to really shore out my defense. It's got to kind of build that. I think upgrading Heavy Blade is really important here, but then moving forward, I think token out Strikes is probably even better because getting the break scaling right away is really good. But first we upgrade Heavy Blade. I need like a really aggressive way to dump my strength. Oh, I guess we have a second limit break. Now remember, we don't have AoE, so the only AoE we can take right now is Cleave. But with the Collector Fight in particular, I guess we're just preoccupied with limit breaking and then head, Heavy Blade his face. So I don't need to worry about AoE for this fight in particular because Heavy Blade just kind of wins. Now second limit break is just nuts in terms of scaling. And I wonder if we just bite and take that anyways. And things we're looking for in the future would be Reaper and maybe just better. I think mean, our block is pretty good. So if we aggressively scale the limit break, the heart damage cap is easy to attain. Lizard Tail saves us. And then I think our block's pretty good. We just need a couple more things and maybe we just win the fight. I think the deck small that a single limit break is looking nice. But at the same time, we have Skiria lifted in flame. Getting limit break right away is kind of nuts. I'll do it. I'll bite. Okay, taking some AoEs would be nice. I wonder if I'm overdoing it. I'm probably overdoing it. I'm becoming like a little kid with this deck. This makes my scaling that much crazier. 
and evolve would have been a nice thing to a nice thing to manage. Or to, I want to evolve maybe for the status in Act Two, an Act Four. I mean, and I think Cleave for AOE is for this fight is not actually necessary yet. And Cleave is pretty bad in Act Three with the Thorny Boys. I wonder if at this point we just lift now because we double limit break. Or do we want to took out the strike so we just draw a limit break as quick as possible? Because if we took out a strike, all that's left is just block utility attacks with headbutt and then just like insane scaling and dumping strength. So moving the strike is not bad. But with double limit break, I think lifting edges it out just a little bit. And then moving into act three, we're going to try to took out the last two strikes. And then the deck's probably done. Uh, we got limit break with headbutt. And we probably get rid of ghostly armor. Or we could just do <laughs> the Still the Chaos and Limit Break right now. We're, we're, at, we're, we're at such a pace right now that lip, a true great upgrade is not that important. That's the thing. We're also at such a pace that Ghostly Armor saving that is not that important either. And we could just do... We don't necessarily need to waste our potions because I think we're pretty good in this fight. But... Like a slow play and just do Limit Break next turn. And save Ghost Lamer as well. Now getting bashed is going to be kind of sick because we're going to have so much scaling that Heavy Blade becomes a big thing. So I could just do bash instead, get rid of Ghostly Armor. I was going to do Headbutt Pendip on this. But maybe it's just more important to do bash, keep him vulnerable, and maybe just get the Heavy Blade, actually get a little Heavy Blade. This fight's not going to kick her ass at all. We're going to one-shot the boss. I wonder if we just do like the Silk Cast now though, just to kind of get the strength scaling. It's just in case that this fight's a little bit hard. I'm fine with that. But then maybe that means we don't keep the bash. Maybe we should just do bash anyways. Yeah, I'll, I'll use my potion even though I don't. I really don't think I need it. Just single limit break is just GG. I like wasting potions. That's a nice feeling. Offering. So we get less card rewards. We can no longer smith. Okay, so smithing is interesting because with fusion hammer, we could technically just like toke. And I'm not really looking to upgrade anything. So we have warp tongues to upgrade. And we can always toke. With fusion hammer, the toke to two strikes. I would like to toke two strikes in this deck. And as far as the rest of the upgrades, I don't need the second limit break to be upgraded because I only need one. In fact, getting this thing to exhaust is better for me to have the exhaust, both for block purposes and both for bloat. I don't need to limit break scaling. Oh, just having the access to one that exhausts is totally fine. So we're never really looking to upgrade, right? So we have to recall. So one recall and we two toke. I'm totally fine with toking two strikes. So fusion hammer just seems like a free free uh, energy. Now, the only thing I would like to upgrade is True Grip, but that's a small little price to pay. I guess we could just hope the War Tongs hits it. It's a small price to pay. It's a small price to pay, but I plan to token and have a recall, so that's already three things I can do at a campfire. And there's only three campfires here, so I don't need to upgrade. Alright, so let's look for Elites. Now, again, Reprimancer is pretty problematic, but again, same concept against Reprimancer is we just one-shot the Reprimancer herself, and don't worry about the ads. One thing is the things that kind of mess us up are like jaw worms and the darklings are pretty bad fights for us. So we want to avoid darklings like the plague. But aside from that, like single target is going to be pretty useful. And we have a lot of energy, which I don't know what we're going to use, do with it yet. So I'm just doing one elite and three campfires because every other path that has more elites has less campfires and I do want to toke. So this is the path I'm taking. I am going for toke sites, absolutely. Why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I? Uh, offering is a little awkward with... Hmm. With Coffee Tripper. I don't need this card. I can just get rid of it. Uh, 
Brum, brum, bam, bam. Second headbutt is interesting. I don't think I needed the deck small enough. One headbutt's just kind of fine. Second headbutt means I can do. Uh, let me break that much more, or maybe bring my block that much quicker. But mm. anger is also a nice thing to kind of dump our strength. I think we already have heavy blade twin strike covering that. Yeah, why would I go for fusion there, uh, Gus? This is one of the hard fights for me. We don't have AOE. This is one of the harder fights, big time. I wouldn't. I wouldn't like to take damage here, but at the same time, it's like uh, sometimes it's the price you have to pay. But I guess we could kill one of them. We don't, need, we don't need these cards anymore, and we have enough strength coming up that maybe just heavy blade kills the other one. So we just let's say we kill this thing, right? I kill this one, and then I should be able to kill the other ones with like twin strike heavy blade and pendant coming up. Now it sucks that we got rid of those cards, but with Pendib and the amount of strength we have, we should be fine. For, for a fight that's hard for us, honestly not too bad. For a fight that's hard for us. Is this the time when we do brainstorm? <laughs> uh, okay, so Emily is, is AoE, and I guess Emily kind of makes us not scared about Reptomancer as much anymore, even though we're going to watch that Reptomancer. And there's also a duplication potion. I could just hold on to that and try to set up for the heart, because at this point, I think we're just kind of winning everything. So we're not going to take brimstone, but I could just play for the heart and take duplication pot and maybe remove here. We have a trigger to manage Emily, but a trigger is not upgraded, and I can no longer upgrade cards. And Brimstone is AoE, which is going to help against Reptomancer and Jawworms. But uh, it's also really good for Act 4 Elite, I guess. The AoE from Emily is good for Act 4 Elite. But for Act 4 Elite, we're just going to Heavy Blade single target and kill them. It's not worth putting it in my deck. You also got to ask, is removing worth it or saving money worth it? Because we do have tokes, and we can't upgrade, so I need something to toke. I'm probably not going to toke a defense. Um, I think duplication pot is pretty nice to hold on to for aggressive scaling or for in a pinch. Be right back one sec. Yeah, so just because a card being one of the best in the game doesn't mean we need it, right? So here's the reason why. Against the heart, Emily is not going to be that useful. Against it's good against Act Four Elite, it's good against Reptomancer. But Reptomancer, we just decided we're going to single target Reptomancer anyways. That's not a problem. We also decided that. Um, I guess the heart emulates not necessary. It's not it's not better than heavy blade or twin strike for what I'm doing. And for the woke blow, it is pretty good. So it's good insurance for the awakened one. So good insurance for awakened one. I mean, it does do some work in the it does some work in donor deca as well. But donor deca, I'm totally fine with single target and final pain for days block. So I'm already kind of solved for donor deca. And I guess for woke blow, I can do the same thing where I just kind of single target the cultist down. And once that's done, the fight's pretty much over. So, again, I just, I mean, it's just not necessary here. So, again, okay, Jawworms. So, the other things are, are, like I said, the Darklings that we just fought, which would be problematic, and Jawworms. Um, so, yeah, those things, we, we did think about that. We were a little bit worried about Jawworms and the Darklings. And there is, like, four hallway fights left, maybe even, like, five or six. So, we could just take it to handle hallway fights. Or I could just... Uh, I mean, because Darklings and Jarvis are such a pain in the ass, Stephen Lane's probably fine here. Ah, I plan to. I plan to do me. We don't have it. We don't even have. It's a defense is terrible. I mean, our block's gonna be interesting. Lister Tail's gonna be a big factor here. I just don't know how much I value this duplication plot because... <laughs> so here's what I could do. I could go for an extra elite and skip a campfire and toke here instead. So 
The gold is interesting because I can toke them. The only problem is... There's no shop right in front of me. But there's an Act 4 shop. Uh, I could toke... The un there's a shop over here. But I have to fight two elites with Normalis in my deck. And then at that point, I, I only can toke once and I have to recall. I guess I can remove... I could take the gold here and do fight these two elites plus two hallway fights with normalities in my deck. And then remove one of the normalities here at the shop and then toke the other one. Just to have gold for the sh shop to pop off. I could also just take a f act one rare relic f fight. Interesting. Uh, I, I have Fiendfire to remove normalities and stuff. It's interesting. Let's try it. I want to upgrade the true grid finally. Let's go. This fight was a little bit hard for us, as we discovered. So we can true get the normality here. And then... Uh, the last thing I want to draw is draw into a... Uh, I don't want to draw into normality here. It's a risk that I'm taking. So I'm going to do this just, just in case. Uh, this would have been first to do first, but... You got to keep in mind, there was a chance I wasn't going to uh, draw normality, so... You, you just... I just had to take that chance. And if we're going for the one shot here. I could just do the Gation Pod and end the fight here. No no hus, no mess. I don't want to deal with this fight. The Reptor Mentor is one of the ones I didn't want to deal with. And now we have a shit ton of gold. Holy shit. Wow. And we get Immolate anyways. And still, even, I think Burning Pack is better. Let me explain why. So we use Burning Pack to get rid of the normality that we currently have, and we have 5 energy, so card draw and exhausting is pretty good to also manage, uh, make the deck smaller, let me break more aggressive scaling. But I mean, we are getting offered Immolate, AoE is quite nice for the hallway fights. We just get rid got rid of Reprimancer, so we're not worried about that anymore. I think Burning Pack is probably better for the deck, just because of card draw and 5 energy. And it also helps manage normality, so yeah, that's what we're doing. It's just a case where you don't need normality at this point. I mean, not normality, but you don't need, what's it called? You don't need Emily at this point. And now we have a shit ton of gold, and we're actually kind of not struggling with the normalities. Because we have ways to get rid of them, but also... We have to fight one more leap, this normality, and then we have a shop and token. That's, that's a lot of gold, holy shit. I want to try to draw out normality here. I want to bring back Heavy Blade always. And just get rid of these cards. And um, we just got Inflame Limit Break. <laughs> there we go. Just gotta survive two more turns after that. Which should be pretty doable. Get a lot of strength. Alright. We can actually even kill this guy potentially. But now we can't. Oh, I mean, I guess we technically could have. <laughs> if I did headbutt, I didn't have enough energy. I almost killed him. It's kind of funny. What's up, one bot? How you doing, buddy? Alright, so now we just gotta survive one more elite with these... Oh, Shockwave is huge. Survive one more elite with these, uh... Normalities. And then we... Are free to go. We triggered one of them, so there's only... I'm gonna bring another trigger back just because I wanna trigger the last normality. And then we just do limit break scaling, GG. And people are probably, like... They probably think they'll play it differently, but, like, you gotta understand... Wait, alright. There we go. All right, let me scale and win. I guess my it gets here absolutely. All right. It's, <laughs> it's, guys, it's one of the best ironclad runs that's ever happened.
like, I don't have to tell you, I kind of want to get Pendip stacked up. Stuff from McFay is amazing. This arm is fantastic. Now, we could take... We could take a second, uh, Heavy Blades dump more, but this arm just kind of just rounds out the deck beautifully. I know the deck's getting a little bloaty, but I can totally manage that. I might even get rid of Smoke Bomb and take the Xerdy Pot instead. I, I really failed to see what Hallway Fight could be hairy enough for me not to take the Xerdy Pot here instead. And after that, we're literally about to remove both Normalities and have, uh, 1400 gold at a shop, which, if I draw a Courier, it'd be absolutely nuts. Happy Flower is a tough one to lose. I guess this is a good thing to smoke bomb, <laughs> technically. <laughs> I guess I can see the smoke bomb value here. But at the same time, I can just kind of like aggressively scale here as well. Uh, hmm. Yeah, this is a good smoke bomb value. All right. Got pen up here. Okay, GG. So blessing the forge for upgrades. I mean, since we have fusion hammer, upgrades could be useful. Like in terms of, like, what would I want to upgrade? I guess my powers, but. Dexterity? I guess Dexterity could be useful. Maybe upgrade's probably better. Let me see. Upgrade the Charms, upgrade the Shockwave, upgrade the Powers when I want to play them. Um, I'm not really concerned about all of it. I guess by upgrading I keep the second limit break to get more aggressive scaling. Upgrade this for Blessing the Forge. So we can do things like Offering and Battle Trance and upgrade the whole hand, but... I just don't think upgrading is that useful. Maybe just straight up dexterity is better. Upgrade could make the difference between Fiend Fire killing, can make the difference between my powers being that much better, or... Okay, I can see... Honestly, we don't need it. I don't need it. I guess we gotta just think about the heart now, because this is the only, the only thing that we need is the heart. And Act 4 Elite, so... Upgrading for those both of those fights doesn't seem like... Guys, we're about to have a huge shop. I, I'm just hoping this turns out to be bonkers. Never would have imagined all this gold. I mean, yes, the upgrades could be nice. But is it better than, like, a dexterity? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So we got upgrades here. That's not bad. I have a lot of gold. I want to take advantage of it. So I'm going to take the whetstone. Okay, Bash if you fire great upgrades. I like it. Another shockwave is always really good. I'm gonna take a shockwave. Uh hmm. I can take a thorn pot for the heart. Don't necessarily need that though. I can take Avicus. That's like very fringe value. I'm just, I'm just at this point I just want to buy things because I, I want to get stuff out of the relic pool. So by getting things out of the relic pool, I'm hoping that Act 4 shop is better. So at this point, we don't need damage. We already have we don't need we don't need this. But I just want to get that out of the pool. The second one is really good. Um, do I need to shrug it off here? Shrug it off is not bad. At this point, we're kind of adding a lot of crap to our deck. So maybe I keep it small as is, because Lizard Tail is already a thing. They already out of the pool. You're actually totally right. You're totally right. Just by being there, out of the pool, you're totally right. Absolutely. Absolutely correct. I guess Abacus would give us some fringe value. Ring of Pillow is just a dead draw. You're absolutely right there. I could science it. I don't care. Unless I, unless I have a... I'm going to feel really salty if... I had a way to use that gold. I wish I could get some card there. Yeah, I wasted some gold there. I, to I, I, I totally knew that that was a thing. So this is one of the hard fights because I don't have uh, AoE, so this is one of the fights that challenges me just a little bit. 
But even then, it's not really a challenge. So I should have just preserved life as much as I can. Alright, well that's a good first turn. It's a pretty good first turn. Being weakened sucks. I would like to stack up my my pendant, but I would like to stack it up. Uh, but I wonder how much I have to fuss to do that. It's too much of a fuss to stack a pendant here. So do we just do we just take like fairy in the bottle and lizard tail, and we just can't lose? Like if we take fairy in the bottle, and lizard tail, do we just automatically win? I mean, yes, if Courier was one of the relics in the Act 4 shop, I made a big mistake by spending that much gold. But whatever. I'm, I'm just going to roll with it. It's a good learning lesson for those people who make that same mistake. I mean, I already knew the relics get out of the pool, but I made the mistake in that small moment to think that I need to buy them. But that's a good learning lesson. I don't know if Sweet is better than Fairy, because Fairy is like another lease on life with this a very aggressive deck. And that's just another... Like, t t treat it like an intangible. Fairy in the bottle is like an intangible, and all we need is to survive for so long and so we just hit the damage cap every single turn. So think about it that way. And not against multi-hits, but we have self from clay in those situations and I'm not really worried about dying to multi-hits, but I'm saying in the, in the, in the events where like, barring multi-hits, it's just another lease on life, which is bodes really well with a very aggressive scaling deck. Like another lease on life with Lizard Tail, it seems almost hard to lose. If you know what I mean. I did. I did this the other day. Pulled the deck off like this just the other day. What's up, Tiji uh, Man? How you doing, buddy? Nice. <laughs> nice. No, not like this. No, not like this. Wait, what? You're supposed to help. I guess I, I didn't care about the math, but I guess I should have. Most important thing is killing the cultists here. We'll head about this arm. It's just about knowing what you need to do. The most important thing is killing those things. The, game, the fight's over. As soon as I get this little breakout, the fight's over. Alright, fight's over. I, I think I want to distribute the inflame here. I also kind of want to do offering. I could save that for next turn, but what, I'm going to get someone scaling that next turn is not going to be a, a thing. So we just bring this back. I guess bringing back disarm should help as well. Uh, I, I guess all things help here. We have flame bearer next turn. Uh, I guess going for the river break makes more sense though. We're probably going to feed fire next turn. 
Um, I could do the Siren Slow Play it. Or let me break. If it's small enough, I'm gonna get them to break anyways. Uh, the biggest downside right now is gonna be the multi hit, so it's disarm here. Abacus value. I kinda wanna just fiend fire all these powers away. Because we're just gonna let it break. Just gonna let it break for the next phase. I could slow play this fight though. I could just slow play and not do that. But if I just get rid of these, then I'm only drawing to limit break and block, and it's just kind of game over. Granted, it doesn't kill. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 210. Uh, Alright, cool. Yeah, we lose Bash, but that doesn't matter. Heavy Blades are smack. Alright, uh, should we kill now? But then, like, am I really willing to go into the next phase? I guess next phase I have. Pendiv? And we have 18 strength still. I mean, he won't be weakened. I could get one more limit break before I end the fight. I don't have to rush it. Color Spurs were Mazda at some point. I want to limit break here. I guess technically I could bring my Heavy Blade and limit break next turn and do that. I guess technically I could do that. We're gonna have a lot of damage next turn. He won't be vulnerable though. Just about lethal. It basically means I want to stay healthier though because I don't I don't get to rest at the next campfire. And I don't have to sustain, so ah, being low on life is a little sucky. I mean, Negafrit gave us a lot of colorless cards. Like when the game was first out, we didn't have that many colorless cards. It's been kind of nice about that. Abacus. Hi. Uh, so I have an idea. I have an idea. I want to stack a pendant if I can, but it's kind of hard to stack a pendant against this fight. So I, can, I can stack a pendant by one. Maybe two. That's the best I could do. So let's hope we don't get a courier so we don't feel like an ass for uh so we don't feel like an ass for buying those two relics okay so we got collector souvenir which is interesting because it stopped the vulnerable once it stopped the vulnerable that's probably game over we also got a weaken should i take the cheeky little kunai prox or nah now okay so stopping the vulnerable it's quite nice or we can just do for 5 dexterity, and when we have 5 dexterity, how do we lose? So we have 5 dexterity, alright. The blind for the weekend is pretty good, we have shockwave for that, so we don't need that. Now I guess we could... Instead of stopping vulnerable, I'll just, I'll just get the dexterity, and then if we have lizard toe entering the bottle, we should be fine. I might take another shrug it off here. Because if we're going to have dexterity, right, with speed pot, then shrug it off is a pretty good card. And Thunderclap is a way to strip artifacts and also help so help strip artifacts for the Act 4 Elite, but also getting vulnerable for the big hits. Like Thunderclap is kind of nice here. And but Shockwave kind of does a similar thing, and I think we're just going to one-shot with Heavy Bleed anyways. Uh, if I'm going to choke, I guess I could choke out at this point. The deck's pretty perfect. I don't need to choke out anything. And since we're going to have Dexterity, Defense are pretty useful. I can take a spot weakness at this point, actually. So I think the fact that we have Inflame 
and two limit breaks. Maybe it's probably used as just a dead draw. But it does help me get the aggressive scaling that might be useful. Just like getting one spot weakness means the limit breaks are that much better. But with two limit breaks and inflame plus Geria at three. I think Spot Weakness is probably a dead draw most of the time. Like it's it served its job. Maybe it's time to go. Can't talk about the curse, but I wonder if Spot Weakness is still gonna get some value just because if it hits if I get it off, it makes Limit Break that much more aggressive. I don't think we need that much more aggressive scaling. I think our scaling is that is good enough as it is. Limit Break's already exponential. So I think we, can, we kind of agree that Spot Weakness is just a dead draw. We'd rather draw into a block that's going to have Speed Pod Dexterity attached to it. Are we, are we in agreement about getting rid of Spot Weakness, or do we want to... Uh, I think Inflames the remove. I think Inflame removes itself and gives me the strength. That's perfectly fine. Nightbot's correct. That's absurd. It removes itself and gives me the strength. I don't need to even need to see the intentions. I just play it and boom, it's like a, it's like a strength pot. I think Inflame is not the remove. It's because of the fact that it gets out of your deck by itself and doesn't require intentions. And it just does the scaling. It helps me scale without anything else. I guess probably just redirects me in the lead fight, but I think the lead fight I'm gonna one shot with Heavy Blade anyways and Fiend Fire. I'm really not worried about that. Maybe I'm jinxing myself, but Heavy Blade Fiend Fires things are probably gonna be. <laughs> uh, I guess one thing is like getting weakened to make sure we get weakened, but I think Shockwave covers that. I guess we can also do sp we could do Strength Pot to scale up quicker. So here's what we could do: we could do Strength Pot and scale up more aggressively of Limit Break, and instead of doing Speed Pot Dexterity against the Heart, we could just do. The Clockwork Souvenir to stop the Vulnerable so we don't take damage, right? Because are we really going to be preoccupied with doing Dexterity Block when... I mean, we have Fairy in the Bottle Lizard Tail to save us, but I'm trying to say, like, let's say we stop the Vulnerable, we survive the first two turns, we have Weaken with Shockwaves, aggressively scale, and at that point we're just going for damage cap, damage cap, damage cap, and this stuff to save us. And I guess Strength Pot kind of helps us scale aggressively to get damage cap, damage cap, damage cap, and let this be our thing. But I'm also kind of content with just having Dexterity. And we have a lot of energy, so... I'll take this and let's get out of here. I get, I get, so if we're going to choke something, so if it just redirects us, it makes the scaling that much more aggressive. So then what do we do? I should have enough attacks to redirect. Uh, and I think redirecting is probably not a problem. I don't think we need to redirect. I think our goal is just to one-shot and kill with damage as opposed to redirecting. So I still come back to probably just being kind of a dead draw. But it does help me get that much more aggressive scaling. I wonder if it's worth it. No, I don't think we need it. Mm, but we're kind of preoccupied doing... Headbutt has to hit Limit Break. Mm. I wonder if the second Fiendal Pain is a worth our move. We don't need the second Fiendal Pain. It doesn't actually do that much for us. It helps our block a little bit, but it's kind of slow. So I can see myself removing a second Fatal Pain here. Oh, but at the same time, playing them, getting a little bit extra value from all my Shockwaves, man, the Disarm. I mean, I have a lot of Exhaust cards. I could make or break it. I think we're just kind of already won. I wonder if we have to remove it all. I think we could remove Spot Weakness. I do like Spot Weakness because it helps me get aggressive scaling, and I think aggressive scaling is the name of the game with these things to cover our ass. But I wonder if just Limit Break twice with Geria is enough to aggressively scale. Uh, I mean, we did kind of already win. I guess getting rid of Final Pain. Seems like an okay draw. Mm, Similar Contra for Inflame, I suppose. The thing is, once you have Limit Break going, you like, never want to do Spot Weakness. It's always a target to remove, but it's about getting there. That's the problem. Yeah, Twin Strike is very good. That extra bit of damage to hit damage cap is super important. That's a way to dump strength, and that's super important to me. I would never remove that. I, I look at both of these as my Holy Grail offense. These dump my strength. These are super important with Limit Break numbers. Twin Strike is a damage cap enabler. 
I think Metallus is just fine to keep though. I think we need to get rid of Fuel Pin, number two. I mean, it does make Fiend Fire a really big block, though. With double Fiend, fiend Pain, Fiend Fire becomes a big block. Uh, but do we need to do that? Aren't, aren't we just, like, doing damage camp, damage camp with the Fairy of the Bottle of Tail? Like, we also have Dexterity Pot. Like, are we really looking for Fiend Pain twice? How much damage do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 50, 80 damage. It's not bad. I could do Metallicized Fiend Fire that way, but uh, do I want to Fiend Fire all these cards out of my deck? Because at this point, once these cards are out of my deck, all I want to draw into is the Limit Breaks and he Heavy Blade, and we just win. Make sure there's gonna be a lot of damage. We always have free in the bottle. Do I, or do I just want to do that, honestly? One, two, three, four, five. So 80 damage. And maybe try to do like some. Just draw into like. Heavy Blade. That's it. We don't care about these cards at all. I guess Metallic has is sort of nice, but it gets rid of 16 damage. I going to pay first was not back consideration. I could just do speed putt now. Mm. So I lost like three block. That's fine. It's actually not even sustained. Right, Strain of auto exists. At this point, I feel like offering is pretty good to go for lethal here because we have limit breaks. Limit break battle trains means we're going for lethal. I just don't know if I like this much damage. I guess Fairy Bottle Lizard still exists, so I'm not too worried about it. So I'll take the six hit. Uh, so we just win now. Fight's over. Eh, we lost a lot of life, but that's. shit happens. Strike down me. Yikes. Strike down me. Strike down me. Okay, it hits twin strike. So didn't we talk about like if you have no strikes in your deck, this should never be an option? I hit twin strike, so I can't complain. All right, so we have uppercut for weakened and vulnerable and artifact stripper, and we do have we do have uh, five energy. So uppercut could be kind of nice to make sure that we hit the weakened or get rid of artifacts, or is it just kind of a bloat to our deck? It might help keep up the vulnerable. Although we do have bash and two shockwaves, so you gotta look at it this way: we have bash two shockwaves. I think we're gonna be hitting. I guess uppercut helps get rid of artifacts for disarm, but I think we're going to be hitting the weakened and the vulnerable no problem. It's really important that we just super tight with our scaling, because because we have such little life now, throwing the bottle is a thing we have to consider. So we have to be super tight with our scaling. We have to do limit break, limit break, super tight with our scaling. I can't blow at all. And we're going to have to hit damage cap. I think we can't take uppercut here. Not only rare relics, that's not necessary. I just think strike dummy when you have no strikes in the deck feels kind of bad, but I guess technically I have twin strikes, so I can't complain. <laughs> And I can't use this, unfortunately. Welcome, Dr. Bates. Thank you, man. All right. So we're going to take the dexterity here. We got an early limit break, which is quite nice. I was going to get rid of the vulnerable, but I'd rather take the dexterity. And let's go for the limit break here. You know what's kind of funny? The most important thing right now is not dying to these first two turns with this. So doing disarm now is really good. Because the most important thing is not dying to these two turns. So the status are going to suck. We need to find the weekend. This is probably just going to be a, a, a lit fairy in the bottle. That's fine. It's imperative that we don't die to 
for the next one. So friendly battles will be fine. Whatever. Boom. We got limit break. And I, I want to do offering. It's very important that I aggressively scale here. And we apply the bash. So we're going to do the offering for sure. So we can get rid of the burn as well. So we're already kind of doing things here. We got the shockwave. So that's good to give me a weak and invulnerable for the first attack of next turn. Uh, I guess I'll do it just because I want to get one amount of the deck. But I'm going to need to... I guess technically I could use both of them now to make sure they're weak and invulnerable for the next attacks. Because they're about to, they're about to be artifacts. Mm, as long as I weaken... It's going to be hard to get rid of the artifacts after the fact. Mm. It's too important to make break here. This, this gives me one turn of weaken. This gives me one turn of weaken, whereas this gives me damage and helps me stack pendant. This gives me one turn of weaken. The pendant means I can get a cheeky little damage cap, maybe, next turn. But this gets it out of the deck. It's three block when I draw back into it next time. It does weaken for the first attack. And it keeps him bashed. Alright. I need to keep one in the deck, though. I think that'd be really aggressive in my scaling here. See, that should have got rid of spot weakness, huh? So we got limit break. We have weaken for the first attack here. That's I the other limit break got upgraded, that's a little unfortunate. I think we do a cheeky little damage cap here and get rid of these two cards. I keep flame bear, get rid of these two cards. Cheeky little damage cap. Because I don't want to draw back into this. Now, next time I draw into this, this is a decent block, but not really. It's only like three block per card. And I have dexterity, so maybe I can get rid of one defend and feel good about that. And get the damage cap, because we have to try to do as much damage as possible every turn. So as long as we survive the next attack, I think... Lizardo always exists. I don't want to have Lizardo be hit by multi-attack. So we do this. Hit the damage cap there. Make the deck even smaller. And we survive here. So we have good dexterity. I... want to play limit break before I play Shrug here, just in case. Abacus was kind of cool there. Alright, so this potentially means that... Wow, we're hitting damage cap again. Do we just focus on damage cap here? Do we just focus on damage cap here? And we just we should just win like that. That's the whole point of the game. So we hit damage cap again. So even if this lizard tail would be a thing, so let me see the math. So he's doing 60 damage, right? So we're gonna have um, 44 block plus 10, all right? So 54, uh, yeah, we're fine. Alright, so we do this. Try to get damage gap one more time. If we don't hit damage next turn, then I don't know what to tell you. If I don't get lethal next turn, I don't know what to tell you. There's like... Three different ways to get it, and plus I have battle turns to help draw into it. Now we have even more chances of hitting the damage cap. So, we have battle turns and three attacks. So strike dummy was a thing. Fairy lizard tail baby. Why it's so silent? This is the Iron Clan, not silent. I bet it's a decent score. Eh, Two thousand nine hundred and ninety.